All right, Abba Yahweh, we do thank you for all things. We do humble ask and request the magnificent name of Yahshua that you speak to us your word, the truth. Uh, these sins are sinking our conscience. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord to the King, may we see this Israel. All right, we're going to get right on into it, all right? Well, we got a little bit of history from antiquity that we're going to speak about here for a moment. And, you know, when we think about this, you know, there are many authors, and I've known authors. Uh, in the previous years. Uh, they've written books, and I've searched them and looked to see that um, the actual deities that I'm getting ready to go over, um, which actually is where Christianity gets its main thrust from, they're hardly ever even mentioned in their books. And I'm kind of wondering why come they don't ever mention these people too, or, or these, these uh, um, cult, false, mighty ones, whatever you want to call them. Have you ever heard of a, a piece? Have y'all? Serapius? You ever heard of him before? I tell you, we're going to learn something then, ain't we? All right. Serapius and a piece. It's just something. But anyway, let's get on going with it. Of course, the whole idea of all truth, especially in the time we're living in now, is to come out. Now, I had a radio interview that I did um, while I was down in Georgia. Uh, Jim hasn't gotten it to me yet because once he get it, get it to me, I'm planning on letting y'all listen to it. The uh, Saints down in Georgia, they was listening to it. They was able to listen to it, and they got an exclusive, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. But it's actually a very good interview, and it's supposed to be aired tonight uh, on a radio station in Memphis. Uh, but I told him I won't be able to listen to it because, I, you know, I, obviously I'm here on Scripture study. All right. All right, we know about the history of Rome. But a lot of people don't realize um, because it seems like in the time that we're living in now, according to the historian Josephus, is that the Greeks, the Romans, the Europeans, the Americans, uh, they all want to take all the history and the glory and antiquity to themselves they, as every, everything had originated with them. All right? And so America has done no different. They, they've done the same thing. They want to try to make you think that uh, we're the greatest country in the world, but actually what we're doing is following uh, the same sentiments of ancient Rome. Now, throughout history, we've heard these names before. Nimrod, Tammuz, Zeus, Osiris, Isis, Mithra, Istar, Arteranimus, Istar, uh, as they start, is Ishtar, as they start Tay, the first one, and et cetera, all of which come from ancient Egypt. So all these mighty ones that you hear, these different cultures adopting, every single one of them came from ancient Mizraim. What happened was is that once they come to their culture, they gave them names that they could better pronounce for themselves. Um, all right. Uh, all of which came from ancient we Egypt, ruling empires, which came after them, who worshiped the same gods. So whatever the gods that the ancient Mizraims worship is the same gods that the Babylonians, the Assyrians, um, the Greeks, the Romans, and all the way down the line. Are you following me? Um, they worship the same God, they just call them different names so they could be better understood. Now, this is an ancient map right here. Uh, of course, right here was Memphis. It's kind of ironic that we have a pyramid down here next to this river between Tennessee and Arkansas, the Nile is basically what it is, isn't it? Uh, and, it's called, and, and it's in Memphis. It's amazing, isn't it? Tennessee is just something else. I'm telling you, it's just something else. It's a hub. All right, but Memphis is, is where the, the actual religion of ancient Egypt, of course, now all that come from Nimrod and passed all the way down, but since it's one of the first, Nimrod's a great ruling empire, but this is uh, the next great big gigantic ruling empire that everybody seems to focus on, which is Mizraim. But what had happened was is that when they moved the actual library that was in Memphis, they move it over here to Alexandria. And I'm sure you remember about how that the Greeks went and burned down uh, the libraries in Alexandria, and we'll touch on that. Now, but Memphis was actually a bull god, and his name was Apius. And you're going to have thoughts going in your head here, because then you're going to wonder why come our ancient people constantly, every time you turn around, they want to worship this bull and say, these be the gods. You all remember that when you read in the Torah? These be the gods, these be the gods. What in the world were they thinking? You understand what I mean? All right, that's what the thing pretty much looked like. That's in the carved image that they had found. Um, 
uh, that, that, you know, the ancient Egyptians was worshiping, but that bull name was Apheus. Apheus. Now, Cyrus um, was the ancient god of the Mediterranean post, uh, coast. I mean, you know, all up along that, down that sideline right there, okay? They, it's just that people don't understand. We, we have a, a bad habit of trying to view things today as the way it was back then rather than trying to get our minds to think the way that they were functioning back then so that we could better understand. The claims was that he was born, talking about Osiris, of a virgin, resurrected from the dead, the same as the story Christianity gives us today. And the Christianity, you know, they take some of these stories, but we're going to see the difference at the end here. Osiris is also called sitting on the throne, so-called sitting on the throne, as a redeemer of departed souls from this life. The Egyptian bull god, Apius, uh, was called the Lord of heaven and the giver of everlasting life. Apius became known as the soul of the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine this? It gets even more crazy. Now they had this trinity of God the Father, Sounds like Christianity, don't it? God the Son, which was Osiris, and God the Holy Spirit, which was Apheus. All right? The priests at Memphis began combining Osiris and Apheus together, henceforth this statue, <laughs> where well, they got two heads. They got Apheus on one side and Osiris on the other side. So you notice in a lot of cultures, you'll see figures that's got two human heads. All right. They believe that by combining these two together into a single deity, both the original creator of the universe and the other one who could also guarantee everlasting life. That's how they came up with that cat. All right. <laughs> the new God was known as or sapius. <laughs> so they combined the names together. All right. Now, who was this Cyprus, or Cyprus Christus? Well, believe it or not, he has some of the exact same character traits as the Christians who call him Jesus Christ. See, now, when we speak of Jesus, we've got something totally different in our mind than what the Christians got in their mind. But you're going to find out that the Christians, their Christ, and the whole entire religion actually originated from this guy right here, Sapius Christus. And there he is. Sapius Christus. All right? Notice the Egyptian here worshiping Apius, the bull god. Now, in the third century BCE, Sapius follows, moved the headquarters from Memphis to Alexandria. And I showed you that on the map, right? They moved from here to here. All right, something great took place too because what they did was they built this gigantic, great, big, massive library that was in Mizraim, all right? This library contained 500,000 to 700,000 books of classical learning. I mean, when they called it a massive library, it was a massive library. Of course, the Alexandria Library was destroyed by the Christians. You know, the Christians, they like tearing up stuff. You know what I mean? And just getting rid of stuff, you know what I mean? In 391 CE. Alexandria the Macedonian, who was the leader of the Greek armies. Now notice, you'll see, notice something, you'll see Solus Seprius. This is up in the Roman culture. Just like Christianity today, back then, Seprius temples could be found as far as Britain to China. So it's just like Christianity today. It spans one end of this globe to the next. See, only thing they've changed is the names. But the worship has remained the same. So my, my concern is how is it that these historians and these people who write these books miss this little God, this mighty one? Why, why do they just, is it because that he's too close to what Christianity is and they chose to just jump over him and go straight to Osiris? Am I making any sense? Ah, don't know, but people have their reasons uh, for withholding information or whatever it is because 
when we start to compare these things, look at these things, we, we notice this thing is just, it's just like Christianity. And then we're going to find out even more so why Christianity partakes and do certain things. So now we can see why Yahweh had other disdain towards these gods. He did not want his people Israel worshiping these false gods. He didn't. Satan knew the real Mashiach, and that is the actual translation in the Hebrew for Messiah, is actually Mashiach. All right, the, um, the Greek or the English, we would say uh, Messiah, but it's the Mashiach would come. So Satan knew he would come, so he'd flood the world with the worship of false gods, false mighty ones. All right? Now, he just didn't know which way. He didn't know everything. That's why at the end of it, you're going to have the beast and the false prophet is going to be showing up. You know, he only has limited information. He does, he's, he's not all-knowing and omnipotent, all power. So if you notice, at the end of this thing, in the book of Revelation, everything goes the opposite way to where he has to actually copy what, and mimic and emulate what Christ did. All right? Christianity is sun worship based on astrology. The signs of the zodiac. That's the reason why we continue to keep going over like we did last Shabbat on the book of Jubilees and bring this out because these sayings need to be really rehearsed in our ears a lot. In Jubilees 1529, for the command is ordained for a covenant that they should observe it for every, forever among the children of Israel. Among who? The children of Israel. For Ishmael and his sons and his brothers Esau, Yahweh did not cause to approach him. He didn't let these two even though they came from the same loins, approach him. He chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, but he chose Israel to be his people. <clears throat> and he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men, for there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his. And over all hath he placed spirits, that's why I keep putting emphasis so you can understand the reason why that these people did all this worship because they had these spirits, these false spirits over them. That's what they were really worshiping. Spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. <clears throat> but over Israel, he did not uh, um, appoint any angel or spirit for he alone is the ruler and he will preserve them and require them at the hand of uh, his power and in order that he may preserve them and bless them, and that he may be he, he is, excuse me, and he may be theirs from henceforth forever. All the people of this earth need to comprehend that all nations are not Israel. Are you following me? Remember earlier we talked about how Sapius was actually worshipped from Mizraim all the way up to, to Europe over there where Britain is commonly, where it was used to be called Britannia. Then all the way over to China, I mean, they got all these temples and stuff that this, this cat was known all over the place. Second, there's a 654 again after these, Adam, also whom thou made us Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. Just because we come from the same man and we come from the same woman, that doesn't make us all of the same nation, which we understand that by the word, right? Um, and the people also of whom thou hast chosen. And this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. Remember, for Israel's sake, as for the other people, which also come from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto the drop that followed from the vessel. Now, think about it. If you was on the American side, what, what, you can't really blame them for taking out these words that are not favorable because people are going to pretty much figure it out. But at the same time, there's a scathing rebuke by the Most High Yah that says people are in trouble. They start tinkering around and messing around with his word and taking books out. You know, because Israel is a nation, we're supposed to be the ministers to the other nations. And, and the reason why the world's in the condition is because of our disobedience. But the Most High, he doesn't care anything. I know it sounds harsh, and it is harsh, but the Most High really does not care. Now, if we was to modernize this, that means... Yahweh cares nothing about Africa. He don't care nothing about the Arabs. He cares nothing about the Europeans. 
He don't care nothing about the Indians. He don't care nothing about um, the Chinese, the Japanese, and all this other stuff. All he cares about is Israel, his people. Now, on this side of the pond, he don't care nothing about Canada or America. <laughs> he don't care about nothing about none of them. He only care about his people. All right? And then those who can hear the message, receive the message, and accept him as Elohim, but they have to forsake their gods. So when you start to watch today the posture of a lot of people, you know, this is a pretty strict and narrow way that we're in. And you're going to be hard-pressed, very hard-pressed to find another ministry more serious than this one right here in America. I guarantee it. I've searched. Believe you me. When you leave something like this, all you go back to is the other mighty ones. Right now, I'm doing a newsletter on makeup and jewelry. Strictly from the book and stuff to show you exactly what happens. Because usually when people fall away, well, the first thing they do, especially women, they won't go make up just like the prostitutes and the harlots. And you'll see some of the ugliest people, boy, the first thing they do is put on makeup and then they want to take a Facebook picture. What are they doing? Fools make a mock at sin. Everybody want to show the whole world how they look when they make up. Well, they're constantly reminded every night when that mess come off, who the real them are. The mask comes off. Strip naked. Does that make sense? Holiness is, is dying in the time we're living in. It's dying. So the most I don't think too much about the nations. And now, O oh, Yahweh, behold these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But we thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. And if the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? Isaiah 40, 15 says, Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as a small dust of a balance. Behold, he taketh the isles as a very little thing. All nations before him are as nothing. So just don't, don't think because we have on our Federal Reserve notes, God bless America, that, that Yah has anything to do with this country. You know how I usually have to answer on these interviews. Everybody thinking that this country is something great and that God's going to have mercy on it. No, it ain't God going to damn this country. It's already slated for destruction. Um, we got a Supreme Court that's going to sanction sodomy. Now, what did y'all do to Sodom and Gomorrah? What are you going to do to America then? <laughs> no respect to persons. Uh, as they count him less than nothing and vanity. All right, Rome, Israel, and of course, Christianity. Ecclesiastes 17, 17, for the divisions of the nations of the earth, he set a rule of every people, but Israel is Yahweh's portion. That's who his people are. Now, back to Apheus, all right? Apheus, this, this, this bull right here. So what Christianity is worshiping is actually Osiris, Apheus, and Sephray. How do I pronounce that earlier? Are y'all paying attention? Sarah be good enough. All right, this same, this same Serapi of Egypt, all right, was the same Serapi of Christ, is the same sun worship. So that means all these regions was actually worshiping this God that come from Mizraim at that time. And, of course, we just got finished naming a plethora of them. All right? The same gods, mighty ones, uh, the Egyptians were worshiping, the Greeks were worshiping also. Now, Sepius Christos, Sepius Christos was known as a healing god. <coughs> Sepius Christos was also known as the good savior. Sepius Christos was also known as the anointed one. Sapius Christo was also known as the Word. 
You know what I'm saying this? That's probably the reason why these European writers that write these books, and I got a few of them down there, and I don't see this cat in the books. And I'm wondering why come he ain't there. Some even believe that Sapri is resurrected from the dead. The cult of Saprius is what laid the groundwork for what we know today as Christianity. Now understand this. Christianity did not die for you. Christianity did not purchase you. This is where the deception come in today. It was the most high through Yahshua HaMashiach that actually did that work. It's just that somebody else had thought to take credit or to snatch you from him as soon as. It's kind of like when as soon as you get birth, somebody want to take you directly from mama. That's the same thing that religions has done. And of course, the people that have gone on before us did not hunger and did not thirst after righteousness so that the people could be filled. Because we did have somebody like that, we wouldn't be in the stupor that we're in today. Some of us. Is that right? The sign of the cross was very instrumental concerning the worship of him. And they had many different ways that they would do the cross. Because we see the ankh right here, right? And they were, there was a little ankh right there. And there was, these were crosses then at the time. And so cross has always been some form of worship. But what does the Torah tell us that, that would happen to anyone that is cursed? They would die on a what? A tree. They say nothing about no cross. So everything goes back to Mizraim. Now, Sapir's rule and expressed his power through the 12 signs of the zodiac. You know how many times you used to read your horror scope? That trips me out every time I think about it. Huh? They telling you exactly what it is. Job 9.24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked and cover the face of the judges thereof, if not where, and who is he? So the earth is given into the hands of who? The wicked. So the difference between us and them are laws. That's the difference between us and all the nations. Our laws because Yah has given us righteous laws. He's given us holy laws. Matter of fact, he said, he said we're so great that he has given us as a people, he's given us great laws. And when the Torah was written, all these things, you know, the do's and the don'ts, that's because these are the practices that the other nations were doing. You read about it in Jeremiah, you read about it in Ezekiel, you know, one of the practices of the nations, then you think about this today. Israel were a shepherd people. Can you imagine being out in the desert all decked out in, in um, some type of gold and earrings and makeup? It'll run all over the place. <laughs> they were desert people. Can you imagine, if, hold on, hold on, hold on, uh, uh, Father, I got to go and, and, and put some makeup on before I go tend to the sheep. I got to go get dolled up before I can draw water. You see it? And every shepherd is an abomination to who? The Egyptians wore makeup. Male and female. Now, what is this society doing? Male and female. <laughs> Just, you're like, what in the world is going on? Everything is happening right before our very eyes. I'm like, what in the world? I saw a video the other day. I saw this guy playing the bass, and I go, that guy got fingernail polish on his fingers. What in the world is wrong with him? And feminization. And feminization. We have set apart Sabbath day. They have Sunday. Did the Egyptians call Ra the sun god? Where do you think Christianity get it from? We have set apart feast days. All this is for the purpose of attaining perfection because perfection is required. You remember, Enoch got translated because he was perfect. He commanded Noah and them walk before me and be perfect. And we still hear the same thing even in the renewed covenant. 
Obedience. Isaiah 8, 20 says, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. So we can feel sorry for these Christians, but they ain't going to do no good because these people love their false worship. You ain't going to do nothing about it. They're going to stick in this stuff. Now, the Most High is just. If he wouldn't tolerate Israel breaking his laws and statutes and commandments, what makes these people think that they can do that on purpose and actually get, think they're going to go into the kingdom? You see, what we have today is the same rebellion that we had back then. All we got to do is look at the people who's rebelling against him today. Now, I remind you, there, nobody would ever admit that they're rebelling against him. Israel didn't believe that they were rebelling against him when they were rebuking Jeremiah. But their practices, their lifestyle, it showed who they served. Such the same thing is today. In our laws, we have instructions and guidelines for life that must be lived. This is why, this is what separates us from the nations, is because we're required to be obedient to the God. Not only that, he's given us his spirit that compels us. It, 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 we actually want to be obedient. Psalms 119.42 says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the what? Is the truth. Well, the one thing none of them gods have never said it was that they were the truth. Psalms 119, 144, thy righteousness, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. So the idea is we need to come out. And, and our coming out is here. And every year, every, it does, it takes a concerted effort. But every year you can tell how distant you're, you're coming from the old man that you used to be. You can tell how far away you are from people when you speak with them or you hear them talk or you watch them out of carriage. It's like they have never had the opportunity. I don't even think they would take it to be where you're at, but you've been where they are. You understand? And they can't tell you. They really can't. They can't tell you anything because you're in a position to teach. What are they going to teach you? They're not going to teach you anything. That's why the Most High feeds us. Hallelujah. But it is utterly really amazing that some of these deities are not spoken about much at all. Especially the main one that actually has, when you look at it and you put it next to Christianity, they fit. Just like a glove. Yahweh is not a trinity. And you're not going to fuse him with some spirit and put two heads on him either. And, well, this is what we've been immersed in. Now, if you're like me, you take it personally. You hate being lied to. And the only way you can destroy lies is with truth. Because um, there's a lot of people that have gone on before us. I pay attention. I, I look at graves every time I go by them. I first thought, Wow. Man, I, they ain't have the opportunity we got right now. Man, they ain't have the, I don't know what the most high going to do with them, but I'm concerned about what he's going to do with us. Right. Hallelujah. This is our time, and our time to get it right before the end comes. Everybody wondering about when the great tribulation, your tribulation come when the breath go out of your body. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us stand. Y'all, we do thank you for all things. Pray these sins. At least stay in our conscience and our mind. We need the Holy Spirit to continue to remind us of it so we can stay away from the pagans and the heathens that are around about us and continually to esteem you in our mind and conscience and serve you with our lives. We bless you. Thank you for writing down our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, amen. Shalom.